these fake YouTubers speak. La 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 la. With words they try to jail ya. La 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 la. No creativity. La 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 la. And it's the rhetoric of failure. Hey that fools, Big T here and I'm back with another video. Yeah, it's been a minute since I've been on camera, but uh, you know, I just kind of took a mini vacation, if you will. Uh, I had my birthday and uh, it was kind of like a week long, almost week long vacation. But anyway, let's get into the video. Um, you guys may know, uh, maybe a couple years ago I did this video kind of somewhat revealing myself. Um, and I was talking about how uh, in college I was a managing editor for uh, our college newspaper, college magazine. And, uh, you know, I started off as a writer way back, you know, probably in elementary school, I started writing stories. And, you know, as I grew older, um, I figured I'd go into journalism because I liked writing so much. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's kind of the slant I took when I went into college. I started off with liberal arts, you know, everybody kind of starts with that, filling their way out. And then I got into uh, mass communication and journalism. And, um, you know, I learned all the tropes. I learned the rights and the wrongs, what to do and what not to do, um, you know, journalistic integrity, all that stuff. And while I was in there, uh, journalism itself um, just kind of took kind of a backseat to uh, what I would like to call sensationalism because during that time the internet really started to peak as far as websites and people stopped reading like you know newspapers and magazines as much and they were more focused focused on um, reading uh, you know articles and webs on websites and stuff like that so my I guess you would say my my drive to be a journalist kind of slided with uh, with that a little bit. A lot of our instructors were talking about how uh, you know people would make these bombastic clickbait titles, or uh, the journalism seemed to not be as strong as it used to be. The integrity wasn't there, and things started changing. So that's when I decided to change my major again. And again, with writing, it's like, you know, I can do a lot of that. I can do a lot with that. I can go into video games with writing. Um, so I decided to go into filmmaking because I love movies. And I realized it was a passion I had for a long time. So that's what I did. And that's what kind of led me here to YouTube at some point, uh, along with video games, obviously. So I don't want to come off combative with this video. That's not my point. My point is to talk about just stuff that peeves me. Again, with my history with journalism and uh, what I'm seeing, um, the stuff that kind of pushed me out of journalism, uh, like I said back in the day, and uh, what I'm seeing happening on YouTube. It's been happening for a while, but I think there's certain things about it that annoy me. Obviously, you have the bombastic clickbait titles. Those things are going to happen. They're not going anywhere um, anytime soon, if ever. Uh, that's going to happen. At this point, those things don't bother me as much. Like I said, uh, it's kind of what happens now. Uh, I've done it a couple times, but usually jokey. Um, I haven't done it to like get people to watch a video or anything like that. It, it, you know, that it's it's usually kind of a joke thing. Like I said, but I see things that bother me uh, in gaming journalism, if you will. You know, there's a lot of guys on here that. Uh, portend themselves to be not pretend portend and you can look up what that means it, it's not <laughs> anything close to what pretend means but you know they they put themselves out there as media as journalists you know they they want to have the access they have their sources um, and all that good stuff so the thing that bothers me with them because you know recently we had the e3 and a lot of people uh, especially on the Nintendo side weren't happy with what um, transpired you know they weren't happy with the direct myself included I thought it was kind of a meh direct and um, you know I I just thought the direct itself didn't hit home it wasn't about what they oh they could have showed a billion games that were coming out in five years um, it was just that the the, the pacing and the, the delivery of the show itself wasn't that good. of course it wasn't a big surprise that really hit home we got pretty much everything we knew uh, but here's the problem there's a lot of guys on here, uh, like I said, who who liken themselves media, liken themselves to be journalists that will leading up to these events, leading up to E3s or 
uh, you know, Tokyo Game Show, whatever, whatever event there's gaming stuff happening. Um, they'll put out, you know, every, they'll talk about every rumor, every leak that happens leading up to these events, you know, basically gassing up the audience. They gas the audience up. They talk about rumors, um, speculation, and they talk about all this stuff having to do with, you know, leaks and things like that. And then the event will happen and... 95% 95% of the stuff that they talked about doesn't show up at the event. And so the audience gets, you know, they they were hyped up based on all this, you know, all these leaks and whatnot. So the audience is hyped up on this stuff. And then the stuff tends to happen. And then you have a certain percentage of the audience who is very unhappy with uh, what the event was. They were expecting all these things, all these crazy leaks to happen and they don't happen. And it's not the fault of these guys who present this stuff, but they have to realize that they have to take some responsibility. Because when you gas up the audience with leaks and rumors and all this stuff, and uh, this event happens, an E3 happens, uh, and people are, you know, upset or uh, underwhelmed by the event, you can't wash your hands because you've sullied them. You gassed up an audience with all this stuff perpetuating these myths and rumors about what's going to be shown um, particularly we're talking about the switch uh, there was all the rumors and leaks it happens every e3 but if you're going to present your audience with that stuff you can't then turn around and be upset or annoyed by the fact that they didn't like the event because you know they were gassed up by you and your media and your leaks and rumors um they were ha- they weren't happy with what they saw so you can't then absolve yourself and wash your hands of it and uh, i see a lot of guys they'll say well take this with a grain of salt that doesn't <laughs> clean your hands by saying take this with a grain of salt if you constantly gas up your audience and tell them these things and you know you liken yourself to have some integrity uh or to want to be believed or to want to be taken seriously you can't then just walk away like if you're gonna put this stuff out there, don't whine about the consequences. And like I said, I'm not trying to be combative here. It may come off that way. I really don't care. But I mean, I'm, I'm just saying that these are the things that I see going on um, uh, with these guys. And it's just like, well, you can't then turn around and be whining about people who were gassed up by you and your information that uh weren't happy with what they finally got so i mean that's basically what i wanted to talk about here um obviously there's the news about uh some post or uh, some former employee of a retro or retro or some former employees i don't know what it is uh gave a bad yelp review (laughs) basically that's what it was and these and, and again these media guys they pass this information around to each other they all kind of regurgitate the same thing about some disgruntled employees thing uh this about some disgruntled employees uh uh, bad yelp review about the company they work for and it could be a personal thing could be they got they got cut they got fired they didn't you know they didn't get along with some certain people but here's the thing here's the thing about that is that is not reporting that is not bad in its own but when you put in your title Retro Studios is gonna close or is Retro Studios shutting down question mark when you put that in your title when you know This is the information you're about to deliver. That's unethical um, To me and I'm sure to a lot of people so again You're gassing up people before they click your video to think oh my god They have this information about retro closing and it's a bad Yelp review at the end of the day There's no solid information. There's no there's an anonymous people Uh, saying bad things about a company they no longer work for and (laughs) that's not news Um, you can report that but you can't then put in your title retro studios might be shutting down because again that's clickbait that's the worst kind of clickbait to me so yeah let me know what you guys think anyway uh, in the comments below you agree with me on this again I'm not trying to be combative so many people that I watch that do this I like you know, I have nothing personal against them. But again, coming from my background, 
knowing how journalism should work. And obviously it doesn't work that way today. Um, uh, a lot of times, um, that kind of stuff just bothers me. And if you don't, you know, if it, this is not something that you are personally familiar with, it won't bother you. I, I've heard people say, well, that doesn't bother me as much, but when you're in the, that field or when you've dealt with that kind of situation, it, it just annoys you. It's just like, that's just not ethical to what I was taught, you know, or, and you should know better. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you again for watching and listening and I'll see you fools next time. Peace out.